Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we are celebrating 400 episodes of Ear Biscuit. Why are we doing that? Uh, well, because we're humans and we are supreme pattern recognizers and we like to attach significance to things like round numbers, even though in the grand scheme of things, it means nothing. 400 but, but is you're no more me. important than 399 or 401. Oh, I just thought, I just wanted confirmation that this was the 400th episode. Well, I mean, I'm trusting Jamie on this one. Yes, indeed. If uh, <laughs> everyone that produced this before me was accurate, then we are accurate. Yeah, you, did, you just adopted <laughs> a numbering from predecessors. Yes, and I believe that they were great and that they did that, so I'm saying yes. Yes, this is the 400th episode. 400 of these. You know, I mean, there's a lot of podcasts. A lot of podcasts come and go. So Probably 400 a day, new ones. And you know what? I celebrate the fact that we have done 399 of these, and I was looking forward to doing this one. Yeah. Even if it is a meaningless piece of meaning. It's yeah. very meaningless for us to be here together. And we're not going to just take this time to just talk about the memories. <laughs> no. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go through we're a few let of you your talk comments and it. voicemails in a little bit. But, you know, we've got other things that we want to talk about. We've got things that we want to catch up with each other. About. I went to a concert, and I want to tell you about this. I mentioned it a little bit, but especially sitting here telling you about it, I, I, I guess I need to contextualize the concert as... Another data point on the narrative journey of my sexual orientation. Okay. Um, this was Chrissy's idea. She was like, Brandy Carlisle oh, yeah. is coming to the Hollywood Bowl, and Chrissy loves Brandy Carlisle. I really like Brandy Carlisle, but... Um, I, I wouldn't say I listen to Brandy all the time, but when I do, I'm always happy. She's great, man. Now, in terms of genre, she's she's country. She's like but Americana, not quite, yeah. not quite. She's Americana, folky Americana, she's folky, little, but not quite folk rock. You know, it's country. Um, sometimes it gets a little rocky. She might show up on a feature on Miley Cyrus's new album. She might, you know, she might do a collab with Jacob Collier. She, and she did. <laughs> And um, she might win Album of the Year. She did. Produced by... Shooter? Shooter Jennings. Um, a couple of years back. So I was like, of course, Christy, we're going to go to this thing. And then you and Jesse were invited, but Jesse was going to be out of town. So then you became uninvited. Sorry. Oh, it wasn't going to be me, you, and Christy. Well, I mean, I would have done it. I'm not above that. So the next time, I mean... Yeah, I, I know you would have. That's, that's, that's why I didn't invite you. Because I knew you would oh, probably have you know said, yes. said yes. I would have not preferred that. So who'd you take? My wife. Oh, but who else? Nobody. Oh, originally it was going to be four of us. Yeah, we were going to buy the tickets together, and then I just bought two. Okay, so you didn't. When do the Jesse thing, was out of town, you didn't do the thing where you buy four tickets and then you have to sell two, and you sell it to two people, and then you have to sit next to them. Yeah, and you feel like you got to make sure that they're having a good time. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah. You guys enjoying the seats hey, I you bought? Know, those are, you bought from me? Yeah, those were my tickets, so we're kind of here together. You guys want something to drink? You know, you don't need to do that. You probably should never acknowledge it, actually. Okay, Brandy I didn't Carlisle, have to because I didn't do that. Great performer. I had never seen... Well, you know what? I saw her live once, like back when Britton lived with me. We went... He got us into this Aretha Franklin tribute show that was being recorded for broadcast later at this like amazing theater, and we were backstage as like Smokey Robinson walked past me and went on stage. Do you have a trail of smoke behind him? Uh, he had. I like to think he was being trailed by tears of a clown. Oh, nice! Even better. <laughs> yes, thank you for setting me up for that one. Brandy Carlisle also. As she was coming off stage, Britton reminded Christy that I had met her because I talked to her at that moment. Okay. But I would, I just said, Hello. Hello. 
I loved it. Or, you know, I just said something in passing. It wasn't Hello. a conversation. I love you. Did you do it? Did John Mayer? I didn't. Hello, I love you. I love you. I, I didn't, she walked I didn't, away. I love you. I didn't tell her I love her, but. Because you didn't love her yet. You I didn't, didn't love you, her. You didn't love her yet. I didn't love her yet. And um, this is the last date on her tour. It was called Brandy Carlisle and Friends. She brought out um, some friends, including Annie Lennox. Wow. A rare public appearance by Annie Lennox. Do they seem like they were the really, really friends? Do they seem like they're really friends, or yeah, they seem like they, they were just like kind of doing were, it for they show? They seem like they were really friends. Like us. Yeah, like us, yeah, both. And then she brought out at the end as the grand finale, um, the whole stage rotated around and revealed a completely new stage that was like couches, wow. and in the middle was this huge throne upon which sat Joni Mitchell. Oh, wow. So it was like everyone was then in, in like deep reverence for Joni Mitchell. The queen. Um, so it was, um, you know, it was a powerful woman night mm -hmm. up on that stage. The thing that I should have known, but I did not think about until I was in line going into the venue, was that um, there are a lot of lesbians in attendance yep. at this Brandy Carlisle concert. Probably a majority. I mean, Brandy Carlisle herself is a lesbian icon. Uh-huh. Um, and so I was like, this makes sense, but I just didn't think about that. Right. Because it didn't matter to me. Right. And once I thought about it, it also didn't matter to me. Of course, and you fit right in. <laughs> and I fit <laughs> I mean, right in. Let's get, let's get to the point here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joni Mitchell did, when, when she came out, Brandy told a story about how she was serving... Um, wine or liquor, and then she, Brandy just drank it out of the bottle. And she said, and Joni, you tell everyone what you said to me when you saw me drinking out of the bottle. And she said, you're so butch. <laughs> and I was like, uh, totally relate. You're so butch. I totally relate. So, yeah, Chrissy and I are sitting there um, waiting for the show to begin. We got there kind of early. You can have a picnic at your seat. And we were doing that. Whereabouts were you sitting? In the middle, in the middle of the whole venue, not too far back, not too close up. So you were sitting. I was seated. Yes, the whole time. Yes, yes. I was at that point where it just became like, we don't have to stand the whole time for this. Yeah, right. the best, the best seat in the house is the first one you can sit in. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> where we were, which is nice. Yeah. And um, as people started filling in, and the place got thick with people, that's when I realized. I'm now going to know what it's like to be in an amphitheater full of lesbians. Okay, and I, let me tell you, I do know. All right. So how do you how do you uh, how do you know that someone's a lesbian? Um, well, they all are, Rhett. <laughs> all the lesbians that were there were lesbians. Yeah, I know. But how do you conclude by just looking at somebody? The same way that people concluded by looking at me on Instagram. <laughs> just total conjecture. Okay, so so you, I mean, you're making some assumptions, but you're probably also right. Right. You have reason to make these assumptions. There were not a lot of guys there. Okay. And there were a lot of couples, and both people in the couples were, were women. women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. And they seemed to, like couples that really loved each other. Right. That were both women. Yep. Yeah. I pretty much infer that those were lesbians. Okay. I'm just checking. That's one of the ways that I... <laughs> I also ask every person. Yeah, yeah. Are you a lesbian? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Are yeah, you a lesbian? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Are you a lesbian? And they ask you right back, right? And I'd be like, not yet. Right. <laughs> no, that I know of. <laughs> Maybe. But I know now what it's like to be in an amphitheater full of lesbians. And let me tell you. Seems like it might be pretty great. It smells like soap. Oh. Okay. It smells like Soap. A particular? I don't, soap? like, just soap. Everywhere I turn my nose, and I wasn't thinking of it ahead of time. I wasn't like, hmm, soap. I'm here. I'm going to say something about lesbians on a podcast. I better come up with something. No. I was sitting there. Did you talk, did you confer getting, with your wife to make sure that you were smelling soap? I was sitting there, and I was like, just looking around waiting for the show to start, and I just found myself, I would turn this way, and I would get a whiff of a refreshing, soapy scent. Okay. And then I looked the other way, and it was a different yet equally refreshing- But different. Whiff of, of 
clean soapy. Soap in every direction. Soap in every direction. Now, but, when you got up and you moved about the venue, soap, soap. soap. Okay. It, I mean, so we're not talking. There was not. There was. There was drinking. There was some eating. There was some picnicking. There was not really any smoking. There was no smoke. There can't be at the Hollywood Bowl. But can typically, there? you there'll be like weed smoke and. So maybe a vape cloud here but, and there. Yeah, but you can't be smoking a cigarette in the Hollywood okay. Bowl. So okay. I'm not saying that there wasn't any smokers there, mm. but no one who smelled of smoke. There were soapers. It, it, was, it was an overwhelming, positive sensation of soap. I'm just... that, And I turned to Christy and I said, do you smell that? Mm. She was like, no, what? I was like, exactly. Uh-huh. It's the soap. It was. It was everywhere. It was great. So it was, a, so it was like the best perfume. smelling experience. Not perfume. Soap. soap. Specifically soap. And it, I believe it was bar soap. Something you about a, lesbians and bar soap you have is my theory. theory. Yeah, I'll make it up right now. Lesbians love bar soap. Okay. Or they like to shower before they go to a concert. All right. Okay, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna step into this pit. This hole that you've dug for yourself. I don't know if you've dug a hole or not. I'm just saying you smelled soap. You smelled lesbians. Everybody knows I love lesbians. Right. And I and love now I have another well. reason. Um, it's that they make concerts smell like soap. But I do have a, I have a theory that I'd like y- your opinion on having been there. Um, and I'm going to use the lesbian that I know best to tr- try this theory out. Okay. Well, that would be Stevie, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to make a generalization. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to. I'm digging. I'm digging a bigger hole. Yeah. Do Women it. smell better than men on average. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't know all the factors that go into it, but I've been in women's restrooms and I've been in men's restrooms. Right. I've been. I've been in spaces where women. Have have made the made a home, made a space for you've, themselves, you've and I've been, been in spaces, spaces where mostly right. men. And it is consistent across the board for me. Not a, I mean, nine times out of ten, the woman's space is going to smell better than the men's space. Okay, mm-hmm. so we got that. The second factor is, you know, maybe more lesbians on average than, uh, you know, or less at lesbians on average than women wear traditional perfumes. If you were to go to, let's say. A space where it was much straight ladies, you might smell a bunch of perfume. It might get, it might give you a headache, a headache, a headache. If it's just on the ache, <laughs> right? But now that you found yourself in this lesbian space, right? We've got a lot of women who they're gonna smell good, but we're not necessarily relying too much on perfumes, which I think is consistent with what I know about Stevie. Stevie doesn't have a fragrance that proceeds her entrance into a room, or no. You know, postcedes her exit. No, <laughs> but she's all she always smells good. Yeah, in a soapy way. Perhaps I don't know. If she smells like soap. I was hoping that maybe you would confirm that. I she think I'm like gonna soap. I'm gonna I'm gonna sniff her after this, <laughs> and uh, with permission, I, I should have like asked soap. her. I should have asked her before this. Well, I don't know. I mean, you haven't done it yet. You don't have to, Jamie. Are you in? You're in. Are you in touch with smelling lesbians? I mean, I mean, don't. I are we digging a hole here? Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. Fine. I know we're making a generalization. Yeah. But. I mean, I'm trying to think because, like, as you guys were talking about this, I'm thinking of my straight friends, and my lesbian friends, and the difference in their smells. But most of my friends, I would say, don't wear a lot of perfume, so I feel like I don't have a good okay. judgment on that. Okay, you're skirting. But you're but skirting les- this. no, but lesbians like I've been to lesbian bars. They sell pretty smoke soapy, nice. So. Okay, right, right, you right, know, right, 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 more better than a straight bar. But there's men in there, so yeah. yeah. See, men will smell make something smell. I mean, it was hard. open air. It's in a freaking amphitheater, and I <laughs> I am not exaggerating. I just I was like I'm smelling soap in every direction, mm. and then I figured it out. Okay, did, did, but was your wife, did she agree when she pointed it out? Oh, you don't do smell soap. Yeah. You have a sensitive uh, nose. When I, lean, when I lean over and talk to Chrissy sometimes, I just, I kind of got the impression that she was enjoying her own moment and she didn't need she to talk like, to me about this. Right, right okay. Let you this know? be something that he and his friend talk about. Yeah, <laughs> she, did, she didn't take the bait. 
She took it as a joke. I was like, because the way I said it to her, I leaned over and I was like, I now know what an amphitheater full of lesbians smells like. And so, she, she was like, what? And I was like, soap. And she laughed. But I didn't, I guess I didn't ask her what she smelled. That but you didn't ask me. anybody. You didn't go and say, well, what soap are you wearing? No. You didn't. I okay. didn't. That's good. I I don't think you should have done that. I got so a little too talkative early on with some other women who were around. Like, I was just being friendly. And oh. Christy said, you're talking too much to people. Okay. I was like, I've gotten that note before. Right. I've been there. I've been right. there. Done that so, with you. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So at that point, I settled down. And uh, the show began, and j- just just to put a button on this. A soapy button. I witnessed the pro- probably the most talented vocal performance I've ever seen in per- person. Wow. Short of when we saw Christina Aguilera sing This Is a Man's World by James Brown at the Grammy Awards, you know, 15 years ago or whenever that was. Yeah. That was a that was a mind-blowing vocal performance. But for Brandy Carlisle to be at the end of a tour and on her final night to have so such an exquisite command of her voice, it was unbel- the first song she sang when she came out there was um uh Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh. Which uh, it's a she cover re- song. She record yeah, it's a cover. It's from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, she didn't write that. Uh, absolutely amazing. And just I mean, she is just like my jaw was just dropped. I was just, you know, I was I was tasting soap because my mouth was just <laughs> slacked. And I Christian and I were just looking at each other how effortlessly commanding. Her voice is, and she's got so such good, a, such a distinct. Like you, you hear her singing, and you know that it's her singing too. And when you have the combination of the like spe- specificity of her voice, but then the 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 talent behind it, right? The songwriting, songwriting, and the, great. The, the harmonies, the lyrics are great. You know, it, it was fascinating to me that like she's she's gaining so much popularity. Right now, but she's got so she's got such a storied career already. So all of these fans are like coming into her world, and she's having to educate them from stage at the Hollywood Bowl. These these she two, says things like these two guys lesbians love so so these two guys are my guys. They've been with me the for, twins the twins. They've been with me for you know like twenty years or whatever. Like educating people on like how her band works and. Um, the fact that she's got different versions of her songs, and it was, it, I just found it very fascinating that she was like, you may be new to this, but you're welcome, and it was like, it was very fan-centric, hmm. you know? And she also, like, acknowledged the, um, like, the elephant in the amphitheater with, like, everything that's going on with, like, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Like, she, at the beginning, she, like, gave a speech about it and gave everybody permission to just acknowledge it and then say what she had kind of tailored this night to be. But it was, it could have been like a strange juxtaposition to just say, hey, this is going on in the world, but we're going to ignore that here. So instead it was like, this is going on in the world. There's a lot of heartache and heartbreak and tragedy associated with this. And, but, my hope is that this can be a space where we can uh, get some respite, mm-hmm. where we can recharge. Like it was just a wonderful speech that kind of gave everybody permission to say, "I can be here in this moment and enjoy myself," and then it will energize me to be a positive contribution to the world that I re-enter on the other side of this uh, lesbian soap fest. <laughs> so. I had a blast. I am, you know, I I was already a fan, but now I'm like just a fan for life. For somebody to be that good in person, and I would just, I just wanted, I, I wanted you to be there so bad, so you could. Smell well, it. I wish you had had invited me. Yep, yep, yep. Couldn't do it for the soap could and for brandy. It. I'm a big fan. Let, of let both, me, both things. Let Let me know if if I've if I've overstepped my bounds. Uh, hashtag ear biscuits or leave us leave me a voicemail. You know. 
We're hearing your voicemails. Matter of fact, we're going to play some voicemails we today are. to show that we listen to them. Um, speaking of incredible uh, vocalists, oh, this is not a great segue. Um, oh, I can make it about you, Link. Link Neal, a.k.a. Elkhown Snuggle Baby, uh, performed on a song of mine recently mm -hmm. that dropped today. Oh, October 30th. James and the Shame. This is the third single uh, on the EP that drops on Friday. The single's called Nothing Left, uh, the, uh, the album's called Nothing Left to Love, which is the same name as the first single, but this song that dropped today is called I Think I'm Supposed to Like This. And uh, because I was singing about... It, you could have called it I Think I'm Supposed to Link This. I almost did. <laughs> and, uh, but because I was singing about a situation uh, kind of, you know, it's not like a, it's, I don't get too specific, but you know the sort of like what I'm evoking in the song uh, because you were, you know, you know, you kind of went through the same thing. Yeah. So. I it's got one of my favorite lines on I the album. I invited you to, to, to sing on it. What's the line about the, um, uh, the introvert line about wanting to be home instead? Like I was dreaming about my, my bed or something. What? What's the line? Uh, fantasizing about my couch and I'm cold. Yeah, <laughs> that that I, that may be the the best like pluckable line from the album. Oh, thank you. It's you know out of context. Just put that one. Put that on on TikTok. Just out of context. But I you know did I get a feature? Does it say F E A T you period? Have, no, because you have to be a registered artist. You have to have an artist account within. Um, you're going to hear from my manager, Spotify, in order to for that to work. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, hmm. because it registered. Plus, well, I'm, I'm. Let's not let's not get too let's not paint too big. I I sing back up. Right. Well, this it, wasn't a duet to me. This, this is, is your, like when James Taylor performed on George Jones, uh, uncredited. Uh, what was it? Uh, Bartender's Bar Blues. Bartender's Blues. You know it's him. And that makes it cool, but he's not listed and he's right. not featured, you know. Yeah. You are on the back. It does say L Count Snuggle Baby? No, it says Link Neal. It says <laughs> Oh, which you know what? I should go ahead and I should say this because I keep forgetting to say this and I haven't said it on GMM. Uh but and I'll say it again next week when the album's out, but the physical album is available for pre order already. The vinyl, the C D, the cassette. Doing it all. And a bunch of merch that's associated with it. Um so you can buy it, and I'm signing the first ones that are bought, so you can kind of get in on the early, even bef before you hear the whole album. But if you want to wait and see how you feel about the whole album that drops on Friday, th and then pre-order, you can do that, or you can decide you don't <laughs> like it, not pre-order. But anyway, listen to the song today, and then prepare for the album to drop on Friday. Um, it was an honor. It was an honor to be included, and uncredited, or kind of credited. Um, 400 episodes. Well, before we get into those voicemails, we have other things to talk about. Some to, business? To promote. So, speaking of our favorite lesbian, um, we, took, we took her, Stevie's her name, we took her to Halloween Horror Nights and uh, just scared the crap out of her and Link, frankly. They were both very scared. And uh, the whole adventure in multi-parts is on the Mythical Society, available for all degrees, first, second, and third degree, mythicalsociety.com. It's, See all the scares. There. Go over there. All the enjoy food. it. Had a good time. And of course, um, we always forget to ask you, but rate and review this podcast wherever you listen to this podcast. Uh, we really appreciate it. It does help. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in the way of something that Yes. You want, or a way that you want uh, your life to be. Or your sleep. You might not be able to sleep because your brain is racing. I mean, your mind can get in the way of you achieving and experiencing the things that you want to experience. And you know what? Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. We love therapy and we're huge advocates for it and want everyone to be able to access it. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist 
And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Chime. Now that we got kids in college, it's really dawned on us that we need to help them develop their own credit and have a good credit score. And you may think credit score is not a big deal, but if you're dealing with a low credit score or no credit score at all, that could be a problem for your future financial goals. That's why millions of people swear by Chime's secured credit builder Visa credit card. Credit builder is just a better way to build credit. You build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. Plus, there's no annual fee or credit check to get started, and it works everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted. Plus, if you have a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days earlier with a qualified direct deposit. You can ditch the monthly fees since Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. And access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs easily found on the Chime app, which is more than the top three national banks combined. And you can pay friends through Chime, no matter what bank they use, and cash out your money fee-free. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Um, what do you want to do? A cu- let's go through a couple of tweets because we ask uh, what Ear Biscuits moment lives in your head rent free. You can call us or just reply to the tweet. Uh, Novocaine 96 said episode 280. Throw me a piece of that meat, I'll catch it. This is this is looking down at my neighbor who is grilling. Ah. And I caught the meat and ate it. And I haven't I I I I only talked to the that guy once more since then. He's still there though. Yeah. He put in a pool. So you throw anything into his pool? I think I don't think it's finished yet. Really, you still working on it? Still working on the pool. So, like, I, I expect there to be more meat thrown <laughs> because he's gonna he's gonna have some pool usage. The fact that he threw he threw you meat mm-hmm. and you caught it, and that there hasn't been another interaction is almost unsettling to me. He hasn't been grilling any more meat when I've been out okay. there. Well, let me know when he is. All right. Uh, this is from Lil AC Peeps. When I think of Ear Biscuits, I always remember episode 205. Everything about Rhett's trip to Scotland is so funny. I will never forget the moment when Rhett told us about the plot twist. I laughed so much. That, I mean, that was a big moment. It's defining. It's a defining moment in my life, realizing that I'm not Scottish. And uh, my mom is, um, she was never the same. (laughs) She was never the same. Are you no, crying? No, she's fine. Are you laughing? She's fine. She, she, okay. her, her, her ankle recovered. Rob de France 22 tweeted, the moment where the light fell from the ceiling to the table and caused a fire and panic ensued. Ha ha, the best. I vaguely remember that, but I don't remember a fire. I think maybe there was a joke about a fire or a concern that maybe there would be a fire. I don't think it was an actual fire, but yes, it was this. The show didn't stop. Globular light Glob- fell. Globular. At this point, it's pretty well secured. I don't think that's. I don't think we're at risk anymore. Song to me. <laughs> I could look at their face and tell that they didn't even. Oh, oh crap! Shit. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. We got, we got, Are we burning? We got water. Get the water up. What? Oh. The water. <laughs> it land. <laughs> we're gonna catch fire in here. Uh, but don't don't block the. Oh, oh don't block the shots, geez, guys. Nice. This is the best thing that's ever happened to Ear Biscuits. For those of you who are just listening and not watching, are we still rolling, Kiko? That's the most important oh thing. God. So, All right, I'm gonna get a towel. Oh, shoot. so the the main thing that you need to know if you're only listening to this is this: the sun fell from the sky. The dim lighting has become really bright because the. <laughs> The the lighting fell right in the middle of the table, knocked over Rhett's ear biscuit jar onto his phone, which is kind of wet, but it's okay. 
My my water's fine. Okay. Rachel Johnson says during September when Link came to the realization that Rhett was jerking off to Whoop. those magazines, and Rhett was baffled that Link was it. Uh, yeah, I have. This is uh, us in high school. This middle is, school. This is remember. at the Grock where they were they were hidden in the uh, pool table. And we were supposed to be sorting yeah, baseball yeah, yeah, cards yeah. for a dollar an hour. And I was looking at porn in the bathroom and then doing what usually you do when you do that. And you were just looking at porn and just sitting there in frustration, I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, you were right on the other side of the door. Well, the and door I, is closed. And I had to, we've already had this conversation. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I have no regrets, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> it didn't smell like soap in there, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it smelled horrible in there. Good gosh. <laughs> that wasn't from me. That was the pre existing smell. And Sicily said the 13 minute quickie. Okay, Let's we remember this again. one. Let's don't bring that up again. Also, I really miss Link going, wreck baby, wreck baby, one, two, three, four. Why did he stop? Why'd you stop? Because I knew you didn't like it. Oh. I'll bring it back. Okay. I'll bring it back. Thanks, Ann, for helping me bring that back. Uh, Mackenzie, Rhett describing watching his wife give birth in the hospital like a, quote, scuffle in an Arby's. <laughs> Um, I don't. I'm not sure, even sure the episode, but it is my Roman Empire. <laughs> um, oh, he's thinking about it. Do you uh, remember describing it as a scuffle in an Arby's? No, I remember describing her giving birth like she was constantly about to be hit by an oncoming truck or something. She was screaming so much, especially with, with Shepard in particular, because he came so fast. Uh, but I guess at some point in that, I did say a scuffle in an Arby's, which isn't a place that you want to have a scuffle. But you don't remember saying No, I don't. Of these. Trauma. Everything regarding Link's shower, and I seriously need an update on the whole situation. Have any new neighbor problems arisen? Has he cleaned more sunroofs? I need to know. Um, I was looking out the window while showering this morning, mm. and, I, and it, it's still one of the best like home remodel decisions I ever made. I stand by it. My neighbor's um, fence is still up. And I can't see my neighbor anymore. There's some stuff growing up even above the fence. So it's, so it's mostly like, roof at this point. Things have gotten better. I haven't sprayed the um, the sunroof or whatever it's called, the ceiling light off anymore. And so there's my update. We got a lot of mileage out of that. Entire vlog, lots of talks on here. Uh, I'd like to think that there's windows going in showers all across the globe in remodeling efforts to increase long distance visibility while showering. It's good for your eyes, it's you know, good the, for your soul. The one thing we've never talked about in all of this is the fact that my shower in my bathroom already has a window, but it's one of those frosty ones. Yeah. I can't open it though, but I never even thought about the fact that it was built in, it was there already. Huh, because it lets light in, but privacy is intact. If you were to make that a clear window, what would you see on the other side? The concrete side yard. Oh, see, where the basketball goal is. Yeah, you don't want that. It's better the way it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. I have no plans to change it. Um, Adam Woodbury. I know for me, it's when Red is doing his Link impersonation, talking about Bojangles. Quote: Can I get a light biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> It's stupid, but that impression lives rent-free in my head. You like a light biscuit. And you know what? If you know what you like, you should be able to order it without any consequences. Well, uh, yeah, but also, you should also be able to take a joke of somebody doing an impersonation of you ordering a light biscuit. Well, I've, I feel like I've taken the joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing I'm wrong with the liking joke. a light biscuit, but there's also nothing wrong with when you ask for one, somebody going, can I get a light biscuit? <laughs> Can I get a light biscuit? Can I get a light biscuit? That's how I say it. Nothing wrong with having preferences. I don't say it sheepishly. I say it confidently. And nothing wrong. I say it excitedly. Can I get a light biscuit? And nothing wrong with having preferences and nothing wrong with your best friend making fun of you for having those preferences. I agree and I agree. I uh, went through the drive through at Smithfields and my father-in-law said, when you get up there, he said, what you going to order? I said, shrimp. I always like the shrimp from Smithfields Chicken and Barbecue. I don't know why shrimp, it should be Smithfield shrimp chicken and barbecue because I like the popcorn shrimp. Oh, okay. It was like, when you order the shrimp, order it 
fried soft. And I was like, what? Fried soft? He said, yeah, because then they have to make it fresh for you. You don't want it sitting under that lamp too long. It's going to be hard and chewy. And also shrimp don't need to be fried hard. They need to be just right. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they had I that. Felt, I will say that I felt guilty. That's a great place to About eat, doing that. Saying, I'll take the deluxe shrimp. They give you a tray of shrimp with like the sides you want, and then they give you another tray with just half thing of shrimp. That's how much I like shrimp. I like to bury it in the slaw, cover it in pepper. Man, and I, dip I it in tartar sauce. I haven't had, I've had their, Fried their, their, their barbecue and That's their the chicken, hack. but I haven't had their shrimp. It's all great, man. They Brunswick to, stew. Do you know they tried to go S, SCMB as on yeah. their sign and it yeah. looked like a bank and then they kind of went back? It still says SCMB on a lot of things, but like that classic Smithfield's chicken and barbecue, I think that they realized that they needed to, to say that. If you pass by one of those, that I mean, that's that might be mine. I mean, when I go home, last time I went home, I eat there and I did not eat at Bojangles at all. Every, gotta be every time I go home, and the fried if I chicken, have to choose between Bojangles and Smithfields. Now here's the thing. Bojangles is a much bigger restaurant, many more locations, and Bojang, if, uh, Bojangles is like, I love it and it's great. The thing about Smithfields is it's for North Carolina style barbecue. It's like the only place you can get, for me, like a North Carolina style barbecue fast food. It's the only place that does it. And does it right? Yep. So I go and I get that barbecue sandwich with some slaw. That's what. That's why I go. Yep. We got a. We got an aggressive cosign for Smithfield's chicken and barbecue shrimp platter fried soft. Um, Amber tweeted the sex timber disclaimer song about two straight guys who have only been with one woman each. Let's sing it again. Do you remember it? We're, We're two, two straight guys, guys and, and we, we don't remember, remember this song, song that we sang. But we know it's about us being with woman each. We've only one been with one woman each. each. A different woman from each other that's still our wives. I haven't poked another woman. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we. I think it was good a couple of seconds ago. No, that's what you sang. I'm just remembering that's what was your part. I didn't say anything like that. It's something about. I would never say something like that on this podcast. I haven't poked another woman. I'm a monogamous poker. That was that was all your part. Jennifer, Reed, I have to say, when Link was talking about the time he trapped his hand slash fingers in the safe when putting the passports away, (laughs) and he shows a video recording of it, it's the funny walk that Link does that lives in my head and makes me laugh. Sorry, Link. I don't I remember, remember the, the funny I remember walk. the incident, but I don't remember the walk. I don't remember how it was caught on video, but I think it was I don't remember. Was this a security cam? Oh, yeah. We looked at a I security cam. I think that's what it was. Footage. I'm kind of disturbed. I mean, can we fall back on the fact that we've done 400 of these that like that's why we don't remember anything? It's like Well, we were just talking earlier today about a very specific experience on GMM that I had completely forgotten that had many details. And I'm like, ah, man, I just, th- it's these things that happen on this show and the other shows that we do, um, I think those people who are being entertained by them are more likely, way more likely to remember specific details than us. Right, because it's, but you'd think because it happened to us and we talked about it, we would be most likely to remember it. But I also, I would just like to believe that we, our memories are just as good as everybody else's. Oh, I think they might be. I think based on what people have told me, based on the way that we recount stories from earlier in our lives, our memories are better than the average person. We talk about something that happened in first grade, second grade, third grade. I can name you every single one of my teachers from first grade to 12th grade. Yeah, but... All the stuff that's happened in between. We talk about things that are inconsequential to us, like when you say something about an Arby's and it just hits somebody and st- sticks in their head. Yeah, but it sticks in a different you, place. You were saying it extemporaneously. But even, like, I remember getting my hand s- stuck in the safe, but I had to figure out, I don't know what the walk is because that's not, that wasn't part of my experience. That was just part of their experience watching it. Right. 
So, okay, I feel okay about that. Uh, let's listen to a voicemail. Hi, Rhett and Link. This is Kylie from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was just calling with my um, Ear Biscuits moment that lives in my head rent-free. Um, it's got to be from September this year when Link explained how he finally got to use the butt plug, and um, it became a projectile. <laughs> I just can't. As much as I don't want to be picturing it, I just yeah, can't stop that picturing makes two it. Of us. And it's so on brand. So on brand. For Link. And it's just so comical. And I love everything that you guys do with Sex Timber and just the education and breaking stigma. And I just think it's amazing. Thanks. Sorry to put that imagery in your head, but it's, yeah, that is my brand. For butt, butt projectile. Plug. That's my brand. Uh, removing stigma, that's nice to hear, you know? Yeah, because we, I mean, because we also hear, why do you guys talk about all this stuff? I can't believe you're, you you talk so openly about your sex lives. Mostly from relatives? Um, no, I mean, I, 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 the occasional the occasional comment. I mean, I do think that as we take this time to reflect over 400 episodes, I do think that hearing some of the things that we talk about and the way that we talk about them 400 episodes later right. would be quite shocking to episode one, Rhett and Link. Um, totally different. It's, it, it really is wild. Like, we, we've made these decisions to start, and there's certain, like, watershed moments, like the deconstruction episodes, and then just, like... I don't, we wouldn't have done Sex Timber, even though it's not, Sex Timber wasn't related to the deconstruction episodes. It was deconstruction you know, like, it had was. to walk so Sex Timber could run. Yeah, I mean there was a purity culture overlap because it the deconstruction episodes gave us then the the foundation to talk about our experience with sex or lack thereof or, you know, the whole purity culture thing, which then was kind of getting into the, okay, yeah, I think we are more comfortable talking about these things. You take a few risks, you say something that's genuine or honest and also ridiculously silly at times, and it's a positive feedback loop for the most part. And maybe that's because I don't read enough of the comments. I, I don't know. I mean, you're much more engaged when it comes to the, deconstruction stuff still and uh would you describe that as a positive feedback loop because all uh, it's it not it just depends on what side of the conversation you're coming from it's a um because i i recently made i've made a couple of videos this year just on my like tiktok where i right. just talk about some de deconstruction things and um, I never know how to feel about it because I would say that they they get a lot of views beca because people feel so strongly about the issue and also because the level of engagement in the comments, but mostly between people having very unfruitful discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I don't read all of them, you know, but I would say that there's a lot of negative, a lot of negative, mostly positive. There's a lot of people who are like, why do you talk about this? We've heard enough. You're leading people astray, whatever. You know, there's that. And then there's, uh, this is really helpful to have somebody articulate these things because, you know, I'm going through something very similar. And that's why I continue to do it because it seems to be helpful to 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 those people. Um, well, what was your original question? Is it a positive feedback loop? Like when you get the feedback, does it make you want to do it again or make you less likely to do another spiritual deconstruction TikTok post? I don't know. I'm processing how I feel about it because I'm trying to figure out what um what is my what is my role in the ongoing deconstruction dialogue. Right? And I'm trying to be very like well, I don't want to be somebody who argues with people and I don't want to be somebody who's trying to convince people of something, but I want to be somebody who's, I think it goes back to exactly what we're talking about. 
somebody who just speaks freely about their own experience. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'm an expert on is my own experience and maybe making YouTube videos. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not a doctor. I'm not a theologian. I'm not a PhD in anything. Right. So I want to be careful about the things that I t- I speak into. But like, I think that goes back to why we ended up. Well, I think first of all, there's just this idea of being on the internet for so long and talking so much on the internet. One of the things I've thought about recently is, you know, I think that the, the, the average person when they pick up their phone to go on social media. They don't have the option to go and see what are people saying about me today? Or what 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 new thing did I put in the world of myself talking or doing something stupid on the internet, right? Yeah. But that's our experience because we make so much content that I have to be like, am I going on my phone right now to like get updated on the news? Mm-hmm. Am I going on my phone to like check a score on a football game that I'm interested in? Because a click away is someone's opinion about me, a new opinion that has been formed about me and has been stated on the internet. Yeah. And most of the time it's positive, a good percentage of the time it's negative. You know, a good percentage of the time it's negative? No, it's not. No, I'm saying that there are negative comments. I'm saying, I'm, when I say, I mean, a, it's a small percent, a small percentage. But I'm saying when I make one of my deconstruction videos, it's a high percentage of negative. Yeah, it's a different experience. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that caring about the, po- like taking anything positive from the positive is almost as bad as taking anything negative from the negative. Like per- taking, like taking anything on personally that has to do with my online identity is probably not a healthy like psychological thing the point I, but but what ends up happening is you lose this you start to become a little bit numb to people's perception of you because there's so much of you that's just out there like mm-hmm. 15 years ago i might be really concerned about a particular photograph not where i don't look good now there's so many things of me looking absolute shit on the internet, (laughs) including the most famous image of me ever, the one you took of me without a beard, is like, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, sorry, that's out there on the internet. So it's like, me saying something I regret on the internet, me looking away I don't wanna look on the internet. And and so, but so I think you, when you're just like, am I gonna talk freely about my sex life in a way that doesn't compromise anything about my wife? Or am I gonna talk about something that happened to me that doesn't compromise anything about my family, whatever. I think you just you just become much freer. And so I think it's just a, it's like attrition. We talk about these things, it's not like it's super strategic. It's more like, yeah, we don't care as much as we did a decade ago. So maybe yeah. we just end up saying things and it's like, I'm just kind of saying what I think. And I hadn't thought about it a whole lot. Maybe I should think about it yeah. more. Well, let's play another voicemail and see where this leads. Because I think it might continue this conversation. Hi, Rent and Link. I'm Destiny and longtime Ear Biscuits listener. And the Ear Biscuits moment that lives rent free in my head is definitely Link talking about sorting the mail uh, with Christy. Um, it is something that I unfortunately think about often whenever I check the mail. <laughs> uh, love the podcast. <laughs> love you guys. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Yeah. yeah. Everybody gets mail. And if you listen to our show and get mail, you might think about me having sex when you get your mail and you're sorting through it. Uh, but that, you know, it's that was back when I was trying to... S- I think the origin of that was kind of searching for a way to talk about s- sex without saying it. Or maybe somehow we, I don't even know, I haven't listened back to it, you know, like the way that that came about. But I think it was, I think it was code. I See, I can't even remember. It's like, we talk about sex in such overt terms now that we didn't then. I don't know if I made up the word made up the term for you or if i made it up at home 
Or if I said that I made it up for home, but I really made it up for you. I don't know. But you don't have to know. That's the wonderful thing. It's just out there. What's this? Hey, guys. My name's Brendan. Uh, just saw the tweet about the favorite ear biscuit moment. 100% the easiest answer. It was the first thing that came to mind. I believe it was the episode with uh, asking your wives to rate you personally, physically, etc. And the best thing, I think about this all the time, I listen to this episode all the time, solely for this moment, was uh, <laughs> when Link was talking about uh, how many people would, you know, he was standing there naked. He was like, should I say Bush? And just the 20 minutes, it felt like at least 20 minutes of of Rhett dying at it, bringing it up, Link trying not to laugh at it. Nothing can go wrong with a good old Bush mention. I stand by that. Thank you all. Bush. Do you remember this moment? I, well, I think that episode was, it was a pandemic episode. We weren't in the same place when we were talking about the, no, the survey that we gave our kids was during the pandemic, and then we did one with our wives. Maybe we were together. And should I say Bush? I don't. I'm. I mean, it's like you talking about. I your, don't remember. You, you Bush Bush. I don't know. I don't know. I'm glad that it's stuck in your head because it doesn't live in mine. It's like you know, you just put it out into the world. Let people have their moments. Let this moment is for you. This Bush moment is now for you. You can. It's yours. It's my gift to you. Neither one of us remember it. Um, one of the things. You got any more? You got any more voicemail? No, unless you want them. Um, this is somewhat related. Okay. Uh, this idea that there are things that we put out into the world at some point. Um, that then uh, take on a life of their own for someone in some way. This yep. is this was brought to my attention recently uh, around nerd versus geek, the epic rap battle, nerd versus geek. Okay, yeah, that we did. How many years ago was that? I don't know. I mean, ten, ten years ago. Um, because ten years ago would have been twenty thirteen. Let's see where when was it? October third, twenty thirteen. Oh yeah, so almost exactly ten years ago. Um, and the one of the really cool things about TikTok is the way that these things have got a new life. And this is one of the things that has a new life is this rap. And, I've heard it. Yeah, I've heard this. Well, and it's funny because I I found on TikTok. Well, I I found one that is from this guy. It's Robs Robes. James. It's like it's, his name's Robbie, but his TikTok is Robes James, like the Robes, the word, okay. and then James. So I don't know exactly if I'm saying that right, but he posted. This is pretty great. It is. He's like. Did you just call me a nerd, geek? Okay, so it says, uh -huh. nerd versus geek, getting popular reminds me of this middle school talent show, classic I did. So it's him and his like buddy in there, you know, I guess 10 years ago. Yeah, nerd. Two middle schoolers. They did it at their middle school talent show. Yes. yes Got 255,000 likes. <laughs> I love the fact that there's so many like music stands back there. Like the orchestra is going to get up right after this. Oh, so you got to hear the other verse. I think a lot of people thought they wrote it. <laughs> well, this, this is getting quite a response. Yeah, it is. 
Okay. So, well, but then what I notice is that if you just click on this nerd versus geek uh, hashtag, just the amount of this song being reposted and little pieces of it being contextualized and memefied. And then, and then because we've been going in and looking at the Rhett and Link channel a lot more now that we're posting there again, you know, on a semi-regular basis, yeah. we can see the back-end performance of everything. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, these new releases that we're doing, uh, you know, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're continuing to try to remind people, hey, we're doing these new longer form videos over there. And, and you know, it's catching on. We have faith that it's gonna catch on. But on any given day, other than the few days after release of these new videos, the top performing video by a long shot is it goes back Nerd to versus this Geek. Yeah, and there's so many. It yeah, just, just keeps keeps going. It, it just keeps getting views. Um, But <laughs> I'm trying to see how many views it. Oh, 53 million views. Well, how, I, I, the thing I'm trying to process is like how it makes me feel. Yeah. How it makes me feel. Because obviously it's like, well, it makes me feel good. Right? Um, yeah, I feel all, good that but, it's but like we all, got a life of its own on But we all, we both TikTok. live in this place. We've said before, like our pat, you know, answer for what's your favorite video? The next one. We always say the next one. Yeah. And there's this, um, I don't know. I'm trying to be like, I'm, tr I'm trying to be like, balance my desire and my like belief that, well, we got all this other stuff that we're going to put on the internet with the reality of like, well, uh, we probably won't make another video that gets 53 million views. It, it, pro it just, the, it probably, it probably won't happen. Like it's, if I was betting, are we going to make another video? No, yeah. In our lifetime, it's going to get 53 million views on YouTube. No. The good not. news is it doesn't need to happen. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, and all, and, but yeah, and I don't, it's hard to think that it could happen. We're kind of in a different place where it's like, that's not what we're trying to do. It's like, we've been talking about this lately about how um, good things are, like how happy we are, right? Yeah. Like it's like, I'm very like I love the stuff that we're creating at Mythical. I love the I love what we're doing on the Rhett and Link channel. It's very creatively fulfilling. Would it be cool if it caught on a little bit more and more people watched it? Yes. Is it necessary for that to happen? No. Uh, it would help. It would help us justify the amount of time that we spend on it. I mean, it. it would help if it if it supported itself financially. And I think it, it will. It, and it I think it yet, will. And I think we'll get there. Yeah, we're not we're not we're not going to stop. But it is kind of. It is pretty baffling. I think it's a good, if not humbling, experience for us to say that, like, we're putting these things out there that we're really proud of, and it's and it's just not, it's not connecting yet to as many people as we thought it would. It's just, you know, and there's a number of reasons for that, but the disparity between the overwhelming positive reaction in the comments to how many, you know, how many people are actually seeing it. It's that's not quite adding up yet. It's a little it's a little strange, but um it's just a, we do, we operate in a very know. different but it's a very different world than it was 10 years 10 years ago was way the, the landscape was so different than it is now. And there's I mean there's pr there's plenty of people, probably somebody listening right now is like yeah, people, I'm making, I'm po posting these videos and I feel so great about it and all the comments are so positive, but it's like, it's a, it's a thousand views. You guys got nothing to complain about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's not a complaint. I'm, but I am a bit perplexed by it. But it's just this, this it's not, it's not slowing us down. It's, well, I think the thing that I'm talking about too is this, is this idea of the, um, you know, I want to talk more about this book that I've been reading at some point. Maybe if I don't know what we're going to do about deconstruction updates or whatever, but um, there's a, I talked about this on the site Society on the AMA. I was re, I've been kind of slowly reading this book called Awareness by Anthony DeMello, who is a uh, he's dead now, but okay. he, he was he was popular in the 70s 
And by popular, I mean amongst, I guess, a, he was a Jesuit priest and a psychoanalyst or psychotherapist or whatever, and just a, from India. And just, just talks a lot about life, living life, and uh, happiness. And, yeah. uh, but he spends a lot of time talking about this idea of, ide- which is very, it definitely resonates with somebody like me who's a performer, achiever. I think it would probably resonate with everybody, but uh, the way we have a tendency to identify with, um, you know, the image that people have of us. Mm -hmm. And this happens interpersonally, right? Most of the time, if people like you or people don't like you, they actually like an image of you or they dislike an image of you, an idea of you, which isn't really you. Mm -hmm. But we have a tendency to actually uh, attach ourselves to the labels, whether that is, it it could be something like dad, husband, YouTuber, whatever the thing is, and we have a tendency to over identify with a label. And he's kind of make he, I mean, this the book is incredible, but he talks a lot about this concept of, um, you know, you really can't have that identification and happiness at the same time. It's very hard to hold both of those things. And, hmm. he, and, and the, my favorite quote of the book thus far is, if you, uh, I'm paraphrasing here. If you let it, if you let it, I'm gonna have to read it. I can't because I, I don't want to butcher this. Because if wrote, you let it, I wrote it down because it was so meaningful to me. If you ever let yourself feel good when they say that you're okay, you're preparing yourself to feel bad when they say that you're not. Oh, so this goes back to what you're saying about the comments earlier. Well, and I'm just kind of talking about the like, it's, uh, I think the thing that I'm trying to, so just to repeat that, if you let yourself feel good when they say that you're okay, you're preparing yourself to feel bad when they say that you're not. When you attach any of your own personal happiness and self-worth to someone's reaction to you, and this is a really difficult thing for some, for people who make their living hoping for a positive reaction, which leads yeah. to views and engagement and people buying things. And the business that we run here is kind of based on people feeling connected in a positive way, at least liking one of us. If they don't like me, they like you or <laughs> what, you know, right. whatever. And I don't know, I've been trying to figure out, I it just, I'm beginning, it, when I read what people, especially it, it, it seems very, uh, real right now as you hear people talk about a moment that you don't remember that is something that that person thinks about when they think about you. Yeah. So there's an image that they have of something that you said, something that you did, and maybe it's amalgamation of all things that you've said or the picture that they have. I mean, people begin to develop a uh, a picture of who I am, who you are, who we are. Right. Uh, and they either accept or reject that. And that's fine, and that's their right. We do it, too, with all kinds of people. But I'm just, I don't know, just because I'm getting old, and we've been on the Internet for a long time, and I do anticipate us continuing to put a lot of things out there for people to form opinions about. Um, de- developing this sense of detachment from what the response is, is like this, it's sort of like, I'm in the midst of the beginnings of what that feels like. And it's a very odd thing for someone who has always um, sort of banked on being able to do something to elicit a certain reaction from somebody. And that's kind of like my bread and butter is like performing, doing well, making something that's great. So you will say it's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And detaching from that, but still wanting to make great things that we think is great. Well, yeah, I think that with the success of Good Mythical Morning, there was so much of like, you either like us or the idea you have of us individually and as, you know, a friend duo, right? It's like, do I like these people? Do I want to hang out with them as like friends through the internet? And then, yeah, so there's a lot of attachment to do people like me enough to want to spend time with me? And is there enough of them to like, uh, you know, to support my family and 
you know, make a living, you know. So there was that was at play. It's been nice with what we've been doing on the Rent and Link channel to say, okay, the main question I have here is not do you like me or do you like Rhett or do you like our friendship? It is still a pretty damn big question and is at play in these videos, but at least there's also did did people connect with what we were creating? Mm -hmm. And it's, so it, there's a little bit of distance there, but there can be just as much attachment to that. Did you like what I did? Oh yeah. Did you like what I made? It's not really that different, but it's one step removed from just being, do you like me? Do you like what I made? Is slightly different. At least slightly different. <clears throat> and I think that's what's refreshing to us is like, can I, elicit a certain response, especially like an emotional response. I think that's what's been so exciting about the Rent and Link channel is can we manufacture surprise? Can we manufacture elation? Um, can we provoke thought in addition to can we make you burst out laughing? Can you, can you well up a little bit? It's like these are things that are um, – I think legitimate experience, uh, ex experiments in craft that is very engaging. And we would do well to separate ourselves from the performance of those videos and say, it's celebrate the fact that like people did have, they did have an experience that we wanted a successful, successfully curated experience. You know, yeah, and it's and that's why I struggle with, I struggle with reading comments and I struggle with not reading comments, right? Because you got to know if you succeeded at what you were doing. Because if, if, like, if you get the idea that like, there's a chef who never hears if anybody tasted and liked the food. That's why that would be wild, r r right? Yeah. Aren't you doing it for people to eat? It's part of the experience, right? Yeah, it's uh, I don't know, man. I I don't know. It's I'm definitely still in a place where I'm just trying to figure it out because I was telling talk, me and Jesse were talking about this last night. I was like, I feel like anytime I read comments, and even if even if I go into a situation where, and because a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers and people in social media talk about this in general, or entertainers in general, um, that one negative comment is enough to ruin my day or whatever. It's like, well, yes, that is true. But even if I go and I read a hundred positive comments, people who really get what we're trying to do on the Red and Link channel and are like, oh, I love that you guys are creating again in this specific way. And I see, I get it. I see, and then they describe it and they describe it in a way. It's like, yes, you get it. If I love that feeling that I get from that. But I'm wary of it because you know, am I am I letting that r determine my happiness? Like, am I am I walking away from that situation being like, okay, these people are res responding to this in a positive way? Now I've let that be the source of happiness, <laughs> and mm -hmm. now I need them to respond well to it in order to be happy. But I want to be able to see what people think about it because I mean, that's, we we. I don't know how to create in a vacuum. We've never done that. We've always created in a way that, well, this is kind of supposed to connect with enough people for it to be sustainable because it is it is a business. I don't know. I don't have any answers. I'm just kind of like these are the th these are the things that have been moving around as we um and I it's, I'm really glad we're having the conversation though because we're creating again, right? Like we are not, right. we've been creating all, all along, but like we've been creating a bunch of stuff that didn't get seen that was right. in development. And now it's like, we know we're doing the thing. You, you got GMM over here, which again is like, it's our creation in one sense. But again, it's you hang out with us. The Red Link stuff is like, this is as creative as we can possibly be. Here it is, you know. Um, I'm so glad that we're doing that again, but I'm trying to get to a place. I'm just trying to figure out how to process it. Um, and this t people talking about the way that they view ear biscuits. The reason I'm talking about it now, and see, it seems relevant in my mind. It seems like there's a connection. Is that these people are talking about these moments 
that are significant to them based on something that we did in the past on this podcast that we may not remember. And that's just a, it's a, I don't know how to process that. It's some, it's a weird feeling. It's, it, it was intentional. I mean, it's that the experience that we've given people that these moments that we no longer remember are very vivid to them is that's the product. You know, it's yeah, nice yeah, to, yeah. so it, it, in one sense, it's nice to know that it works. That's a great way to, you know, to measure whether this, this works for people, whether, whether they get it, whether they connect. Yeah, because they carry it, they carry pieces of our lives in their lives. And mission accomplished, you know? I think that's what we're trying to do there, here. And on yeah. Good Mythical Morning. I think we're trying to do, we're we're being much more calculated in the things that we're creating and crafting on the Rhett Link channel. So it's like it's a different the the experience we're curating is different. Yeah. But I hope that a lot of that will live in people's heads rent free as well. I do. I, I completely agree. I think it will. I think it does. You know, I think it's just the question of you It's know, nice. It's nice. I'm, I'm glad that I'm taking up room in your, in your brain. Well, it's, and I think that's the thing. It's like and not to, charging you for try, it. Trying to figure out what is the balance <laughs> of, of, um, do not charging me for it. Doing right? things that are supposed to, by definition, draw attention, and entertain, and then trying to not care about. It's just a, I yeah. don't know. It's a tough. It's a tough. Point. It's a conundrum. It's an interesting point in life. I'm gr I'm glad that. Look at me. I, I don't care that you're looking at me. Because I because I definitely spent a, a big portion of of my life without an awareness of that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like just being not understanding that dynamic. And so it's not that I've have got like a, some fruitful advice to to give at this point. It's yeah, just you don't more, have any. It's more of a. Oh, okay. This is beginning to register in more significant ways than it has in the past, and I don't know what that means. Do you have an aha moment today? Is that what you? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm. Okay. No, no. It's not just. It's not aha because I didn't realize anything significant. I don't think. <laughs> it's just sort of. Well, uh, it seems like okay, it could this be is, significant. This is a, this is a new thing to, to, to sort out. This has been significant. I'm gonna leave you with a wreck, baby, wreck, baby. One, two, three, four. Uh, listen to Brandi Carlisle. Um, her album "In These Silent Days" has a song called "Stay Gentle." That was um, Christy and my favorite song from the concert. Stay gentle. And meanwhile, why don't you stay gentle? Stay gentle. Leave us a gentle voicemail. One eight 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 earpod one, or just use hashtag earbiscuits. Hey, Red and Link. My name is Carly. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I just got your or was listening to your most recent episode um, about Link's tattoo, and you were talking about how people are like, "Oh my gosh, they remind me of my childhood." I'm 25, and you all remind me of my 20s because I started watching um, Good Mythical Morning in my 20s. Um, during a really rough time in my life when I did not want to be on this planet anymore and you just give me a lot of smiles and laughs and refreshed me <laughs> during the day when it's been really tough. So I just wanted to say thank you. And that's really it. <laughs> Hope you all have a great night. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.